So Blade, Brian and DVS, joint number 10, sorry. Number 9, Crypt and Conan. Number 8, Skepta. Number 7, Loki. Number 6, Getz. Number 5, Giggs. Number 4, Chipmunk. Number 3, Professor Green. Number 2, K Coke. And number 1, Wretch32. The people who were judging, Posty from Grind Daily, JP from MTV The Rapper, um, obviously Charlie Sloth, Nadine Scott um, from Rewind, Hyper Frank, Morgan Keys from SBTV, and Viz as well as the host. Also, they had Target and Skepta on there, yeah, yeah. which I thought was interesting, yeah. considering Skepta was number eight. So basically, like, obviously, I don't know how you lot feel about the panel. I thought it was all right. Charlie Sloth was 100% certified. I yeah. always like listening to some of the things that he's got to talk about. Big up to Charlie Sloth and Posty for actually knowing their shit. That's big. And I, I like the way Posty was fucking defending Getz massive, because Getz is one that you can't sleep on. Obviously, Viz as well. Yeah, Morgan, Morgan Keys, Morgan Keys has a valuable opinion. I'm glad Morgan Keys was there to be fair because people may be under a misconception and just say that he's a man that just films videos and edits them. What they don't know, he also manages an artist, so he knows how difficult it is to work with an artist, so he has to study the game to some extent. The girl that was there, she didn't, Nadine, say, shit. Nadine, she didn't yeah. say anything yeah. until, yeah, maybe the top three. And my thing is this, for something like that, and I think it's quite an important debate, instead of wasting a space, maybe what they might want to do is audition somebody mm. or some shit, because there's so much people that you can put in that position, why would you have somebody around the table it's having a, a, a an important discussion yeah, to not say nothing? To be fair to them, maybe it's down to editing, I don't know. Maybe there are some great points, it would be nice to see them. I always think it's a bit of a problem, especially if you have girls on the panel and they're talking about something that's quite dominated by men. But she might have said so much, okay. but that's all no, I got no, no, put let me, in. Like, let, me, let, me say, let me say something then, yeah? If that's the case, if they've put her there for a reason, they're supposed to trust her and allow her to have her, her say then as well. No, like, how, can you, how can you have her there and, and edit me, everything that she's got to say? I mean, you know the people, yeah, for example, that if you have a general discussion with them, they may have a lot to say, but in the heat of the moment, like when the camera's on so and so forth, maybe she just bottled it. I don't know. To my knowledge, uh, the lady from Rewind didn't say much. Um, I don't know if that's because she's used to writing stuff, or I, I don't know, like she's, she's an editor, or I, I don't know what she does. Maybe she's not used to having to speak, so um, she found it difficult. Please don't be offended if you watch it, if you are. Shit happens. Chucky's pretty much said enough for me on the people who are on the panel and I kind of pretty much agree with what he was saying. Bring people in with varied opinions that actually want to express those opinions, you know? If you ain't got shit to say, just don't be on a fucking talk panel, man. My fucking favourites on that was Posty, Charlie Sloth and Viz. Nice to see Posty in there, done no Posty in there. Obviously Charlie Sloth, I love Charlie Sloth. Skepta Target, you're done. This is no disrespect to Blade Brown because I actually think Blade Brown's got fucking heat and he's fucking dope in doing his thing. But in, in all honesty, I personally felt Devious should have had that top spot himself. That, Number 10 spot, I think, should have been too you know devious alone. Though, as people, I think we always remember like our last performance mm. in a post to the whole year. So, Financial Times did drop at the start of the year, and Financial Times did have some big songs on it. That song with Skepta was a big song, the song with I'm Wretch. When you're an artist, it's very hard to pop for the whole year. If you do things at the beginning of the year, then sometimes it's gonna get overlooked. And if you do something late at the end of the year, then some people are just gonna think that you haven't done anything all year, and just recently you've put something out. I'm going by like, cause no, I'm, no, but, I'm, no, but I'm, I'm going by their flipping, the four things that they said, what is it, acclaim, the street buzz, buzz impact, buzz. ability. Based on the four criteria, it's still opinion based, unless you've got all the figures, or you've got a list of every single thing that every single person has done throughout the year. You, I'm not just putting it down to ability, he has got ability, but what I'm saying, those other areas for me, DVS dominated, oh, do you know what I'm saying? Do you know why? Because at the start of the year, the first four months, I didn't know anything DVS was doing, but I knew what Blake Brown was doing, and then towards the end last Blake four Brown's months, saying, DVS, it made it do you know what I'm saying? saying? Blake Blake Brown Brown made it. Made it. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying Blade Brown didn't make an impact, but I'm saying yeah. doing a joint ten is kind of pussyfooting about for me. No, I don't know exactly what they did. Yeah, you, know what you see, last year they put Chipmunk and Noki as joint top ten, yeah. knowing that there was an issue between them to, to create a little bit. Right now, if you look at two of the most credible artists as far as street buzz is concerned, mm. it's DBS and Blade Brown. Everyone done their own top ten, and it was like, for example, if you were ten, you had one point, and if you was one, you had ten points. So they all sent them in, and then they accumulate all the points and then that's what happens and that's what you ended up with. Yeah. Do you know no, I, from? I, don't, I think they're being sly with that one. I think MTV, are, like Snips is saying, I think they purposely did that so you can have someone like me having that fucking debate of like, oh actually, I think DVS should have that spot and obviously you lot are saying maybe um, Blade Brown should have that spot, you see. And it creates that debate. I hope all the viewers can cue this right now because I'm about to mention SAS. So make sure, <laughs> cue it, cue it. Look, at, look at the time underneath so you, when you moan about it, you can put the time and everything. <laughs> but this is an example based upon <laughs> the politics that go in. To me, why so I have a question. Yes, so all right. So no, no, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. There was something targeted when Crypt and Conan were in there. And again, I'd like, pick up Crypt and Conan, I'm a fan, whatever. They definitely deserve to be in there. When, when Target was talking about them, he was like, yeah, because there's not no other rap duos in the UK. Cool, whatever, yeah. But the week before, 
Target on his show was premiering SAS music, talking about, oh, these are the hardest duo in the UK, blah, 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 legendary duo, Ooh, blah, blah, blah. Target, so, blah, so blah. I'm not dissing Target, what I'm saying, is a, what it's a reflection of to me is, was this really a reflection of the panelists' opinions, or was there other politics that were thrown into them? Because I'm not, I'm not dissing Target for saying it. Mm. What I'm saying is that, you know, I know at least 50% of that panel, and yeah. I know their taste in music, and I don't think that the artists in there are necessarily a reflection of their taste. And I think it pretty much is unspoken, but pretty much accepted that every time they do an MTV list, they're there's biased people in there based on certain people in the panel. No, this year, but there's certain artists on that who did nothing this year. Lightning. Wait, I'm gonna say artists was in jail for the whole fucking most of the year. Right? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm gonna say artists was in jail for the whole fucking most of the year. Right? <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. Can I just say this same certain artist you're talking about that was in jail when he released a video? You know, certain people need like, for example, Ryan Daly and things like that to accumulate their views. This brother don't need nowhere. Yeah, he'll put out a video. Oh, see, Sixteen thousand views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixteen thousand views in a day. Normal. Man, normal. Man, normal. Man, so he's had that brother. You got to think about it. 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 You got to think about to go by now, like yeah, you know no, what I'm saying to you. I, 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 let's debate the criteria in which K Coke dominated then, because this okay. seems to be a little bit of an issue. Then okay. let's talk about uh, Buzz. Yeah. Does it warrant a number two? I'm asking you. No, Does no, it warrant? Do you, do you want to and I don't want to offend anybody. Like I, don't, I think K Coke. I mean, I listen to K Coke. I don't think he deserves to be at number two, but he deserves to be in that top five. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. You know, K Coke has been on fire, and he's and, and obviously, and even being in jail, yeah, he still had that <laughs> fucking buzz. We're talking about straight ability. Yeah, see Coke, Coke's sick, isn't it? Jeez. Like, he, he definitely needs to be there for straight I still, I still say I'll put him higher though. But then it's like, what are you judging the what's, era based upon like, the fact that he had to prove no, himself and he's up again? See, the thing that for me lacks is because obviously he was inside and he obviously lacked material. That's all it was for me. So yeah. the other things he smashed it, impact, Buzz, acclaim, oh, there fuck was yeah. There was you know what I'm one. saying? But for me, it's like the material. Actually, did they fucking include material? Maybe they should have fucking included material Charisma. as well. Charisma. But Charisma. MTV Charisma. fixed up on that one. K Coke held it down. Yeah. Yeah. Motherfucker was inside but still held it down. But my thing is, is that the material wasn't there. And I wouldn't have put K Coke at number two, although I still think he's top five because you got to take all of these things into consideration. Charisma <laughs> was actually in there as well. And K Coke dominated certain things. But Snips talked about ability. K Coke's ill, but. When you talk about ability, Chip completely dominates that. Charisma, Chip completely dominates that too. Impact, K Coke was in jail a lot. And then Buzz, that's probably what he might have had a little bit more than Chipmunk did. A little bit more Buzz. JP was saying that they're not quite sure about Pro Green being number three. Because apparently he hasn't really brought anybody in, he hasn't really represented for the streets. I think that Viz and Charlie Sloth completely squashed that anyway. Because remember, they talked about yeah. Pro Green bringing in Rex Free 2 and also. So featuring on artists' records that hadn't had a deal on Malik on the jungle. How much more would you want to give back to the streets? He was talking about Pro Green not bringing anybody in, which was obviously complete bullshit because Pro Green still does collaborations with certain rappers and he's still really much in the scene. But who gives a fuck anyway? Because he's still definitely doing his thing. Would I have put him at number three? I don't know, though. M Malik is like the flipping Styles P of this country. Oh, Malik man. is one of the best out there. Yeah? And you're putting Kalashnikov, who's legendary. How can you say that he's not done anything? Professor Green's been out here for time, you know. Like, he's proven himself. Can't be saying that. Green definitely deserves to be in there, right? Do you know what I think that there was a problem with Toe, yeah? A little bit with JP was that when you're talking about things like this, you kind of need to just go by the facts. Gather the facts, gather anything that yeah. you can and talk about it. I felt like he was more looking at it amongst him and his friends. Because yeah, he, yeah. yeah. he, he said, he said in the debate, he said something about, yeah, yeah he said, oh, but me and my yeah. friends don't really. Yeah. That, I, mean, I just felt like that was completely, I thought that was completely irrelevant. JP might have went home after that debate a little bit pissed off and a little bit vexed. Sometimes he'd say certain things and he'd get completely shut down. This is a problem to me, yeah, and this isn't an attack on him personally, this is an overall attack on the mentality or the way we view music in this country. Yeah? When I heard him say, oh no, I don't really listen to Loki, I listen to DBS, I listen to blah, that's what, I, I don't even know if it was him, no, no, someone said that. But, but this is the thing, it's like, I, I don't know my man personally, I don't know his background, like I said, this is an attack on him, this is a general mentality thing. A lot of the music journalists come from a more middle class background than a lot of the artists come from, yeah? yeah. So it's like, a lot of the time there's an overcompensation for, oh, I need to listen to the most road shit, I don't want to be seen to be listening to any of this backpack music or conscious music. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why it's funny to me that probably the most official guy on there was Charlie. And Charlie had no problem going, what are you talking about? Loki, yeah. of course Loki's in there. I don't believe it was a total reflection of like your top 10 favorite rappers in this country. Not everybody on there. there there's certain people on there whose, whose opinions I really, really respect. Certain people I don't know personally, so it's not a personal attack on anyone. Yeah. Loki and Get should have fucking been in top five. These guys are independent.
talent as fuck and killing it more than fucking a lot of signed artists are. Loki should have been higher. So I think that he should have been top five. He did amazing things with that major, so definitely. And he's a very intelligent guy as well. But the thing that Posty said that I fucking agree with you here is just that gets to set the level so high that him just doing his standard is not good enough. You, you bro, but, but he's but he, he's so look this I'm Why telling you right now, amazing. Gets is a national treasure. But his level is fucking high. I saw the other day Adam Live. Yeah. Ridiculous. I, I, Adam Live the other day. He's in front of a crowd. They don't even really want to even listen to him to right. some extent. They're moving so frigid. He just spazzed out. I'm talking Gets at the end of that performance. The whole trust me, Gets is the best by Gets. far. The problem with why people are overlooking Gets here because first of all, the point I just made, he set the standard so high and he's maintained his high standard that people just think, oh yeah, that's average now. But on top of that, it's just that because because he hasn't had that fucking hit tune where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah, doing yeah. this in the club. Fuck you, man. His ability is sick. I can't even go in about it. I'm not saying that we're going to replace anybody on the top ten. Tiny, but he was. Tiny, tiny. I was going to say tiny as well. I, I, obviously, I'm not like we had this same discussion yeah. in another debate where I, I wouldn't have put him in my top ten in my personal top ten. But if you're doing a UK top ten. Yeah. Tiny Temple not being in there baffles me. Also, to be honest, and I'm not going to go into the artists that I rate because obviously people like to moan, they like to comment and <laughs> right at me and all the rest of it. English Frank should have been in there. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. And, 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 what I like about English Frank is that he literally come from nowhere. And I spoke to him earlier this year. He basically said that there was a gap in the market and he exploited that. So I'm thinking to myself, he's thought this through strategically. He's looked at it like I said, all right, here's the gap in the market. This is what I'm going to do and I'm going to be consistent with it. And he's had consistently good virals. Hold on, one more, one more person. And I'm not saying he's necessarily in my top 10, but he had a massive impact this year in this Sneak year. Box. But Sneakbox. Like Another me. point for MTV, just this, I'm pointing out some things that I noticed. This is not to say that this should have been included just to fucking put a tick, just so you can tick the, tick the box, but this is something I observed when watching the top 10. No MCs from up north. No MC was from outside of London. I think we need to give a look into what's going on up north as well, or just outside of London. Just, just acknowledge it. It just didn't feel like anything from outside of London was being acknowledged. There was no female. Not to well, say that it should have. Lady Leisha would have been there for me if I had to pick a female. There was no one of. Actually, maybe skip to you could say but anyway my, my point was going to be like there's no there's no one from the um, grime scene that, that they put there to make an impact what i would say is yeah at the end of the day i think that you should never debate mm. on whether there should or shouldn't be a female in there a female should just be in there because she's you know no, no, I, I, I understand wait, i'm saying i understand that i don't want them to be like oh just allocate a female or space just so we got a female on there that's patronizing women and you shouldn't do that i come from um, a single parent background so i love mommy i just think lady alicia should deserve to be there to some extent she's had a really really good year she's put out some good virals consistent virals a new F64 was really really strong. She had a song called Lego. Um, I saw her live at BBC One Extra. She was amazing. I just feel like maybe she deserved a spot there. But I'm just saying these are the things that I noticed, and maybe there's a thing about that. I don't know. But my biggest one was that there was no MC from outside of London for me. Who would you have thought? You know what? All right, if going off the top of my head, I would have probably included someone like Sox, who's an MC from from Birmingham. Yeah. His impact in the Midlands for me has been like <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> An MC called Sox from the Midlands, as I've said downstairs, and then for me it's like shit. I don't understand how people are sleeping on him because maybe it's the whole London arrogance. I don't know. I know it's the voiceover over the MTV top ten was something about oh yeah, Loki's number seven, three up from last year, number ten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, it's Tiny. Cheeky, you know. Tiny Temple was number one. And now he's not in it. And now he's ten places down. Like, what the hell? I was obviously surprised Tiny wasn't in there. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more consistency within the criteria because essentially the four criteria that were there, Tiny really should have been in there. The reason why I'm glad Tiny Temple is that I love Tiny. Everyone knows I'm a big Tiny Temple fan, but it kind of gives room for other people to come through. Because like, we all know what no, Tiny Temple has done like, and all of that. Like, I thought it was quite ridiculous that he could go from being number one to not being in there at all. It's not to say the dude didn't do much. He had a mixtape that came out at the end of the year. Uh, uh, based on what Chucky said, you can't just throw people in yeah, there just to tick the box. They, they, I agree with that. There's a criteria. But, yeah, that but I'm saying, based on the four criteria, yes, you're right though. Based, based on the four criteria, Tiny Temper should have been in there. Tiny Temper's not involved. I don't understand that like, J-Brop, a great point. How you get from number one to not even on the list. So um, it's kind of disappointing to some extent. He released a really strong uh, CD towards the end of the year. He also had great commercial success over in America. I, I think he's done a couple collaborations this year with the likes of JLS. I just don't understand how you now no longer in the top 10. Based on the poor criteria, Sneak Bowl should have been in there. 100%! My personal top 10 that I rate is totally different to what's on there. Mm -hmm. Out of all those artists, who would have been in your personal top 10? Because to me, it probably, it probably would have just been uh, Rex Chip and Loki would have been in there. Too sick. In my top 10, like, Skepta would have had to have been in my top oh, 10. Oh, so, in my personal. He definitely would have to be in there. Gets would have been in there. Gets would have been in there. I'd have put Rex would have been in there. Definitely a number one. I'd have put Chippy in there. 
here at number two, yeah, and then definitely. I'd have put Skepta in there. I completely agree, Rex should be number one. Let me tell you why Rex had to be at number one. Because not only did he get robbed of a MOBO, and not only I mean, he didn't get a nomination for the Brit Awards, he didn't even get in on a fucking jump off. I mean, come on, man. Definitely, I thought Blade man. Brown's mixtape was ill, but he's not really my type of rapper. Really. But I like him, though, but not, not top no, ten. Man. The, the buzz DVS for me has just been like, what the fuck? Fuck. Yeah. I'm, I'm touching it by when I go on the internet, who am I plastered by? All I'm right. talking about when I see when I talk to people from North, East, January, West, and January, South. I think Devious is sick, but January, which is all about Devious. February. Because I can remember these times. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, bro. You know, to be fair, he, he was, because I've heard you talking about Devious from day. Right. The reality is that nine times out of ten, an artist isn't going to be doing things the whole year round, innit? Yeah, exactly. Everybody enough. has their time in it. Exactly. It's just unfortunate that sometimes when you come out from the beginning of the, like yeah, when people forget yeah, that Skepta's yeah, album, that Skepta's song, album yeah. came out at the beginning of the year. So it's quite easy to forget so how sick his album was yeah. and what he had done in it because yeah. it came yeah, out. Yeah, you know what? Chucky made a point. We are, as a public, trusting people on a panel to put through the best people out of all of those MCs put through the top 10 to a list that we can all agree with and it is impossible. But I'm that person that's got a fight against that yeah, because this, of what this girl has done. Is, so she's made easy. it hard. La La and Teeth, it popped right off. Right off. Oh my gosh. My tiny temper, Tinchy Strider started rapping because of, say, Nas, Jay Z. I think they more looked at people like So Solid, Pay As You Go.